The direct analysis method is a relatively new and relatively fascinating way of looking at buckling. The idea of the direct analysis method is that buckling is caused by real imperfections in members. And those real imperfections go through progressive P-delta or secondary effects as load is applied. And the actual limit state for a buckling member is reached when the member is no longer able to sustain the stresses that are applied by that P-delta effect. The direct analysis method is very real. If the analyst seeks to analyze side sway buckling, then the analyst actually puts in imperfections into the structural frame to move it into a, a side sway buckling mode. But a key point about AISC's recommendations in, in Section C of the specifications is that the initial, initial displacements must be similar in configuration to the anticipated buckling modes. That means that the analyst must be able to anticipate what the buckling modes are going to be. This does invite the possibility that the analyst may put the structure into a crooked position that is actually the incorrect position or a, a buckling mode that is not the most likely or the weakest buckling mode. For example, it is common for us to think of a simple pin-ended column as having an initial crookedness that would take a shape that would be roughly a half sine shape. But it is, al it is also conceivable that that initial crookedness of the column could take a full sign shape. If such a shape is modeled in a finite element program and subsequently analyzed using a p-delta analysis, one finds that the structure is significantly stronger than as would be anticipated using a conventional mode 1 buckling analysis. But would this really happen? The purpose of this experimental investigation is to find out if the shape of the initial crookedness can actually be tailored to result in a mode 2 buckling mode. First, a basic pin-ended column test was conducted on a member that appeared to be initially straight. But of course we understand that even those members that appear initially straight must have some degree of crookedness. The column failed by mode 1 buckling at a load of 270 pounds. Then a member of the same length was bent into a shape that was approximately a full sign shape. Then this column was loaded. Initially, it appeared that the column's deformed shape would follow its initial full sign crookedness. But with increased loading, the column began to move into a half sign or mode 1 configuration and eventually failed at a load of 250 pounds. Conclusion. Despite introducing a substantial degree of crookedness in the form of a full sign shape, the column refused to buckle that way, choosing a half sign shape instead.